Murray, it's interesting, you know, you, you mentioned um, that it, it's not that difficult in terms of what the equation is, supply versus demand. Um, how difficult is it of a time period for federal governments, uh, Bank of Canada to navigate this and what does it mean for us at home? Well, I, you, you know, look, I, 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 I follow this and I'm a I'm a, uh, a, I'm a cheap economist because that's what I took when I went to university is economics and finance. Mm -hmm. So I, I understand supply and demand and, and prices set on the interaction of the two. In terms of monetary policy, it seemed to me that you always had a governor, a governor of the Bank of Canada or the governor that is in the central bank. And that's what a governor was, is to manage the flow of money. Well, they went on, uh, uh, they went on a binge in 2020 with COVID, and they just flooded the system with money. And that was an experiment. It's called quantitative easing, whatever you want to call it. So they put all that money in the system. That money is sloshing around. Everybody knows it, but they're the ones that created it. Yeah. Now, the, the federal government through fiscal policy, well, I don't know of a government that doesn't like to spend money because that's how you get elected. So the, the governor was supposed to be there to be a governor not to let it get out of control. So we've had both of them just flood money into the system and the average person is the one that pays the price. If you own assets, if you own real estate, if you own stocks, bonds, Bitcoin, whatever, well, you've done fantastic. I'm talking about the average person that's on a fixed income that doesn't own that asset or somebody that's new getting in that's gonna really be uh, under tremendous pressure because of inflationary pressures. What we've done in our business is I have no choice but to raise prices to our customers mm. because our costs, the cost surge, we, we get uh, every day, we get a, a new a new pricing increase from our support from our suppliers, whether it's for new equipment, whether it's for, for fuel, whether it's for our, our energy. And I've got a tremendous push coming from our employees, which I fully understand is because they are are pressured by inflation. So mm -hmm. it, it is really complicated right now. We have no no choice but to raise uh, prices. And that's what's called inflation. And they're going to have to get their heads around this. And it is not going to be easy, Catherine, because they flooded the system with too much money uh, in COVID times of, of March two years ago. Yeah, they, they overcooked it. And now they're going to have to uncook it. That's mm -hmm. the way it is. Try and uncook a bird. That's tough. Right. It doesn't hit. I don't know how it happens. Um, I don't know Marie, how to do it. It's interesting when you say that you're getting price increases from your suppliers on a day to day basis. I mean, are we talking one percent, five percent? Like, give us a bit of a, a sense in terms of to what degree. Well, generally speaking, most prices went up and, and we tried to do the same thing. We tried to live within, you know, a four, four and a half percent kind of be reasonable. Kevin, that doesn't do it anymore. You know, you will get uh, from our tire manufacturers, you know, here's your price, 12 percent. Uh, our equipment manufacturers this diesel fuel, as I said, which is a is a byproduct of, of crude oil, that's up fifty percent year over year. So you, you know, now you're talking about quantum numbers, yeah. Uh, and then and then you've got another cost push that's happening, which is you know once inflation gets in, then prices you can pass on because it's tight. So you got put cost push. But you also got market push because um, it, you know, supply is uh, demand is exceeding supply at the moment. But Murray, do you not think then that what you're seeing and experiencing in terms of the pricing pressures, the cost pressures, will in itself slow the economy down? I mean, that's I think what we're kind of witnessing in the United States. There's a lot of commentary from economists, strategists saying that you know, hold on, everybody, the consumer is absolutely slowing down some of the economic data, particularly in China, slowing down this week. So are are we not at risk that the central banks, whether Canada or the United States, um, are going to have a significant policy misstep? They're ab ab actually going to increase rates at the wrong time, finally, but at the wrong time? Yeah, I, I mean, clearly, uh, inflation uh, will slow the economy down eventually, because the average uh, consumer is paying too much to food, fuel, and, and housing. So yes, they have very little discretionary item left. That's gonna in, slow it down, but I, I don't think it's enough, Captain. There's too much money in the system. It has, they, they're gonna have to withdraw that quantitative easing back out. And when you do that, that that's gonna impact asset prices, I suspect, 
And then that, and that combination will get us back to a normal. Inflation is not 4%. So, right. so it's a lot higher than that. So they've got, they, they're going to have to take some pretty good steps in our view. Um, to mm-hmm. so we have a sustainable economy going forward. Okay. We'll, we'll take a quick break. I'll pick it up right after the break. 